Hello, and welcome back to Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. You might have looked at that title and thought, what in the world? But it's true. We're going to be doing some hardware review today, which is a little unusual, but I don't know. We'll see where this goes. This might be the only time I ever do something like this, or it might become a regular feature. I don't know. I'll see wherever the future takes me. Uh, I do want to make note that this uh, pair of IEMs was supplied to me, um, but that despite that, you all know I'm a straight shooter with my opinions. If something sucks, I'll let you know that it sucks. If it doesn't, I'll give it the praise that it deserves. You know, just like music, I'm not afraid to say something's bad or needs work. With that said, I am looking at the Weststone Audio Mach 10 IEM wired in-ear monitor. Single full range driver with a frequency response of 20 hertz to 18 kilohertz. Sensitivity of 103 decibels and impedance of 80 ohms. I had to look stuff up, but I know what all that means now. Kind of. I hope. Um, they are wired, and we'll talk about the cabling in a second, but it is a Linum Box T2 cable. It seems very uh, fancy. It's got a cool name. It's not just called the cable. It's a specific cable type. We'll talk about that in a bit, though. Um, and it is impact resistant. No, the vault is impact resistant. But the vault is kind of cool. I was going to pick, pick this up anyways. Uh, but it's this like cool little box here. And it has like foam on it. And you can put like your headphones in there. And that's pretty cool. Uh, you may notice there's also a converter jack right there. We're going to have to talk about that in a little bit. A little bit of a magnet there. Just... It's kind of nice. Oh, there is the cloth bag. It's uh, it's empty, as as a bag should be. All right, there's our tips. And this is a carrying box of sorts, uh, a vault, waterproof vault, I think is what it said, wasn't it? And then here we have the IEMs themselves. Say Mach 10. They have the tips already put on them, although there are other replacements. We have a 3.5 millimeter jack, which I don't know what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> My phone doesn't have a 3.5 and neither does my audio interface. So Ooh, 80 ohms though. I don't know that my phone could drive 80 ohms even if I had one. So it comes with the headphones, the vault a sticker, some tips, and um, I mean, it's a nice card. <laughs> I just, just give me a website to go to. I don't need to scan no code. Uh, and this bag, it does it does feel nice, I suppose. Uh, uh, actually. I don't like specific textures. Uh, this side's fine. This side, I think because it is sort of rigid, whereas this one is smoother. The silkier side's okay, but this side just, it uh, does not, <laughs> does not work with uh, my, my, my texture garbage. Now I suppose I should start with the pros, the good stuff, right? How I typically like to start my music reviews anyways. The sound is exceptionally clear. I don't think I've heard anything like this before. Now granted, I'm not a big audiophile guy. I don't have a lot of headphones. I tested a few headphones at that time and ended up landing on the current headset I use, which is the Audio-Technica M50Xs. These are, for the most part, what I'm going to use to contrast the IEMs. The sound here is super clear on these IEMs. There are details in songs that I've listened to before that I have never heard or never heard the specific characteristic or coloring of it. Um, I checked out one sound that just really blew my mind was the rumbling bass during the verse of Demi Lovato's Eat Me. And yeah, dude, hearing each, each intricate clicking 
of this. It, it's less of a rumble and more of like a low gear clicking. Wild. I've never heard that detail before. That was awesome. Um, I've listened to a bunch of uh, classical music, jazz, I've listened to older emo stuff, I've listened to modern electronic pop music. I've tried to put everything that I like through these IAMs to see what's going on. And for the most part, there are details in songs that I've listened to before that I've never heard before. Or sounds that I have heard, but I get to hear a different side of them. Extra sonic information that I wasn't aware was even there to begin with. It's been a bit of a joy to go through some of my old favorites and uh, explore them with this new headphone. And the extra clarity is definitely something I would value while doing the reactions that I do, breaking down what I'm hearing. If I can hear more things, there's more things to talk about. It comes with a bit of a cost though. This is my first foray into in-ear monitors. I don't know if it has something to do with the fact that the drivers are so small, or if this is just because this is their budget line of in-ear monitors. The Mach 10 is the cheapest one they sell in the Mach series, but it is very weak. It's a very thin sound overall. Uh, there's practically, it's weird because like the bass, I can hear more details in bassy sounds, but the bass just never feels large or punchy, no matter how much I've tried to EQ it up. Um, it's just, it's not there. And part of that may be the response curve, which is, I think, two to four decibels higher at the lower range than my Audio Technicas. Maybe that just allows the Audio Technicas to play those lower sounds with more volume. I thought maybe it might have been the impedance. So I have tried it with a regular 3.5 millimeter headphone jack into my phone, as well as using my audio interface through a uh, quarter inch adapter. And while the audio interface gave me a little bit more volume and punch, it still really didn't help the low end of the sound much. Everything is super clear. And if I were playing live on a stage, having this clarity of sound would definitely be something I value in an IEM. But for the purpose of this channel, for my enjoyments of music, I really like that low end. It provides an electricity, an energy to the music that helps me jam out to it. Without it, I often found that I wasn't really bobbing my head or moving my body too much because it felt too clean, too thin, too clinical. It never had the punch that I wanted. It works rather well for orchestral music, but even then at times, instruments like the tubas and the cellos never really had the large impact I would expect from those instruments. For a string trio, string quartet, maybe a trumpet trio. Yeah, these are excellent. And having the extra clarity on the sounds is wonderful. I absolutely loved listening to some stuff like that. But for the most music that I listen to, which is classical, post-hardcore, and metal because of the channel, I just never really found that the empty low end really helped out with it. And it's really tough to explain too. I don't want anyone to think that there's no bass to it. As I mentioned, there's a lot of clarity to it. It's just not full bodied. It's thin but clear, I think would be the way that I want to describe it. The other thing is that unlike headphones, which have the driver sit outside your ear, these go in your ear as the name suggests in ear monitors. Any sort of heavy panning, stuff that I criticize often with headphones, not because of the music itself, but because the headphones just aren't great at heavy panning. I'm looking particularly at older music, particularly stuff that came out in the 60s and 70s as stereo um, equipment was starting to come out um, and music creators were beginning to experiment with that. But even with modern electronic music that likes to play around with sound staging, headphones can create a very this versus that directionality with panning that stereo speakers in front of you angled off to the sides won't and it kind of hyper hyper exposes any sort of panning by making it really feel like it's directly to your left and right but with in-ear monitors it elevates that even further the sound is now directly in your head and it's still hard panned left hard panned right and uh, to me it, it 
works really poorly for that. And I think that's just an issue with in-ear monitors all over the place. The sound staging is going to be very extreme with it. Something that headphones already have an issue with, IEMs are just going to exaggerate even further. Now, we're going to get into some stuff that I don't think is too much of an issue with the IEMs in particular, but IEMs in general. I hate in-ear stuff. <laughs> e even in my casual listening, I've been a headphone guy. I don't dig ear pods, air pods, any of that stuff. It's just my ears, I don't know if it's the way they're shaped, they don't work well with universal molding on anything. It's always dis it's always a, a discomfort. Um, I get the discomfort in the ear. I get the discomfort around the top of the ear where things get shaped and held in place. These are no different. 10, 15 minutes in and I'm ready to pull them out. I don't want them in my ear anymore. It's ugh. I've tried all of the tips. There's uh, five foam tips and five silicone tips. I tried all of them. It's not a size issue. It's not about pressure. I just, my ears don't like having any sort of force put against them like that. Even headphones are kind of hit and miss and most of that pressure is around the outside of the ear, not the inside. My cartilage just isn't happy with being touched, I guess. <laughs> um, so that's that's a big negative for me. And the other thing is the, the, uh, the fact that it's 3.5 millimeter. Maybe that's fine if you have uh, DACs that take 3.5 millimeter, but I, I don't. Like I said, my phone has a 3.5 millimeter jack in it, but I feel like it doesn't have the power to push it. I tried to look up the, uh, the specs for my phone. Couldn't really get any definitive information about it. I'm going to assume it's a 35 ohm jack though, which is half, a little under half the power I would need to fully drive it, which is why when I put it into my audio interface, it had a little bit more full body to it, but it still wasn't as much as I would want. Um, but, you know, for me, my headphones, I kind of need the quarter inch jack. It blows my mind that it's 3.5 millimeter. But again, in-ear monitors traditionally are used on a stage and you would have a little wireless receiver hooked onto your belt or something like that. Um, and 3.5 is probably great for that. It's just something in my specific setup that didn't really work for me. And the fact that there's no quarter inch jack at all was kind of a letdown for me. So... I mean, that about wraps this up, except for one really glaring issue. This is a tangled mess. The, this cord is so thin and wiry. Um, it wants to just fold in on itself all the time. And every single time I went to use it, I've had to spend a minute detangling it. It is not fun. It is not great. I would have killed for braided cables, maybe even just a little thicker of a cable, something that would hold its form a little bit better. It, it's thin and wiry and it's just not great. I don't know. I told you this was going to come back. I don't know if the Linum Bax cabling was supposed to be a positive thing, but anytime I see that name, I'm going to associate it with this really thin cabling that just well, just binds up on itself all the time. And no matter how I've tried to store it, I've tried to wrap it nicely. Uh, the only way I can get it to work well is to have some sort of binding cable around it, which they did give me one. And, uh, you know, you just put this through here and... Ba, ba, ba. Now you got like a way to hold it tight, but that shouldn't be what's necessary. There's so many good cables out there that don't get tangled easily. This feels like those really tiny, uh, like cheap chain necklaces that you might put together in a, a jewelry box and then you always have to untangle them. Even though you put them in nicely, it's like they rest, ha they ruffle, they, they wrestle and rub out while, while the drawer is closed. And every time you got to detangle it, and that's what this feels like. It is one of the worst things and it has made me dread using them because I know it's going to take me extra time and it's all that friction of getting them ready to be used. Whereas something like this thick cable just never gets tangled, ever. So yeah, that, that to me is like the most glaring issue with it is that I don't even want to use it because the setup process is irritating. But I'm going to wrap this up. Like I said, 
they are a clear sound. I enjoy that element out of them. And it's very cool to hear some of my favorite songs with this new ear, kind of. But uh, the flat bass element just doesn't sound great. It's probably fine for mixing. Even then, I think it's a little underwhelming. But it's probably really great on a stage to have that clarity of sound and be able to hear everything that's going on without anything competing, uh, any part of the EQ. So... At this point, I really wanted to use them on the channel. Like I said, the clarity is a very cool aspect, but I, I won't be. I will continue to use my Audio-Technicas as the headphone that I use while listening to music for reactions and analysis. I know this was a little different. I hope you enjoyed it, though. I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, maybe we'll do this again. As usual, though, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and I suppose the hardware you use as well. Until next time, remember... No, I already said that. I'll be back sometime. I don't even know when this video is releasing. I'll be back probably tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That seems to be a normal time to be back. Anyways, remember to have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.